Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is Professor Zayed. Uh, today's lecture, I'm going to be talking about ITIL version 3 2011 uh, framework, uh, which in regards to service strategy, uh, I'm going to be introducing ITIL. I'm going to be explaining what ITIL is, and I'm going to talk about one of the five cores of the um, five cores of the ITIL. Um, so what is ITIL? So I'm going to start out by describing what is ITIL, defining ITIL, and uh, describe some of the benefits of using, uh, using ITIL for IT. Uh, so basically, ITIL stands for Information Technology Infrastructure Library. And ITIL is basically, um, it's a, a part of a series of business ma management practices. It's a framework, uh, not a standard, but it's been used uh, to, su uh, to support businesses. So the goal of ITIL is to help organizations effectively manage projects, programs, and services in the IT sector. So we call these um, types of frameworks service management. Uh, so ITIL is not a standard. As I said, it's a framework. So uh, what does that mean? It means that um, businesses can adapt, can they, they can take ITIL, they can take, adopt uh, some of the, uh, some of our processes come with ITIL, they don't have to uh, follow everything in ITIL. So I basically ITIL was um, developed in 1980s and uh, there are four versions of ITIL. Uh, we are discussing the most common one is version three, which was updated in 2011. Uh, I told there are five sets of books or phase life cycles. Um, so again, I told is a framework and it's regarded as a series of best practices and forms of guidance that should be fully understood. So I told as a framework, uh, we can apply it and adapt it. I, I told to tenants to wide range of diverse IT service needs. Uh, you can also adjust any details to adapt, to best adapt to the specific organization is being applied to. So again, that's why we call it framework. It's not a standard. You can take part of the practices and apply it to the business. So that's, um, so there are five core disciplines of ITIL or phases, or, or uh, some people call it uh, five sets of books uh, that are concerned with IT service provision and the managing of IT infrastructure. So ITIL version three focuses on five key concepts. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as the core disciplines. Each one of these includes a series of main processes. So uh, there is one of the, uh, the cores of the five cores has uh, processes and sub processes. There's a few of them, but um, we're going to be discussing the uh, one core today. And uh, we're gonna de dedicate this video to discussing what is ITIL and we're going to explain uh, service strategy, the first, uh, the first uh, core in the five core disciplines of ITIL. So each one of these uh, uh, cores, five cores, includes a series of main processes. You may also uh, see these described as the five stages or phases of service life cycle. And for a good reason, each one elaborates on a various moments in time throughout the service management. So the ITIL service strategy is the one that we're going to dedicate most of this video to talking about, but I'm going to be making uh, future videos talking about service design, service transition, service operation, and continual service improvement. But uh, uh, the uh, importance of these uh, five core disciplines uh, that we discussed earlier, the uh, service strategy, service design, uh, transition, service operation, and uh, ITIL continual service improvement, uh, they contain a series of processes and each designed to maintain efficiency and effectiveness while the IT organization deliver services to its clients, customers, and stakeholders. And briefly, we're gonna describe the difference between um, uh, client, customer, and stakeholder. So um, what's, what are the importance and what are some of the benefits of using those five core disciplines? So, um, so we're gonna be talking about that, uh, each one of them. So business, businesses depends on a success of information technology. Uh, the IT-based goals, they require the implementation of service management as a practice. So that will ensure that costs are reduced, uh, business life objectives are monitored and successfully achieved, and then managers can pivot effectively in response to change. So applying those five cores 
uh, to, uh, in a business environment uh, have some benefits. And those are some of, some of the benefits are uh, cost reduction. Uh, you have the uh, business objectives are monitored and successfully achieved and communication is improved as well. And uh, you can also improve uh, the way responding to a change, change management. So ITIL provides an effective way to monitor the status of a project and communicate relevant details to relevant stakeholders. Uh, the purpose that we're talking about service strategy, which is the five, or the first of the five core, uh, cores of the ITIL. Um, so purpose of service strategy is one is to define the main goals and objectives of the organization and outline the best practices, uh, stand, practice standard to guide it. And it also, so it defines the main goals. It, it kind of makes it easy to know what the goals are and the objectives of the organization. And it tries to outline a best practice uh, to guide those goals and objectives. Another purpose of service strategy is to uh, determine the quality measures of a project. So you create a strategy in terms of effectiveness and efficiency over multiple targets. So remember, uh, when you have a vision, you come up with a strategy to guide that vision. And uh, based on that strategy, you, you create a design. And then based on a design, you transition the strategy and the design into operation. And the last core of those five cores is the continual service improvement. So another purpose of service strategy is to articulate the particular services to be used in organization, as well as outline the values to be delivered to the clients and customers. And also another purpose is to assign roles and manage responsibility and accountability at the highest level. So there is something in, uh, we talk about, uh, we're gonna mention briefly, it's called RACI uh, model. And uh, basically it stands for uh, responsibility, accountability, consulted and informed. So in purpose strategy is basically gonna come up with the assigning the roles and manage responsibility and also uh, accountability uh, for the project, right? Or the service itself. Another purpose of the service strategy is to design and uh, manage the financial portfolio of a project and to define and position the project within the market environment. So, uh, what, uh, so what is a service or what are services? When we're talking about services, uh, it's basically defined in this way, is means of delivering value to our customers by facilitating outcomes customers want to achieve without the ownership of specific costs and risks. So basically meaning that you deliver a value and uh, without the customer actually taking ownership of the risk involved with, the, um, with this value, with the, delivering this value. So that risk is actually uh, by this, is actually been the responsibility of the uh, service provider. There are three classes of services. One is the core service, which basically um, the service which the customers ask uh, the provider for, sometimes uh, referred to plainly as IT service. So delivering IT service to a customer, for example, um, you know, wanting a uh, internet, like uh, delivering, managing a an IT infrastructure for a company. Uh, so you deliver, that's the IT service. Or creating a help desk or a service desk for a company and managing that, the operation, that's the service. That's the core service. Enabling service is basically a service which cannot be seen by the customer, but is required to provide them with the core service. Okay, so we're going to be giving some examples of what enabling service is in the next slide. So this is basically known as the IT provider service or supporting service. And then another uh, set of service is called the enhancing service. And that's a service which, while not specifically requested by a customer, this will be a part of your company's value proposition, differentiating from the its competitors. So I'm going to be giving some examples on each one of these three. So uh, example of a core service, uh, your company email, um, you know, it's a type of uh, three service provider, which provides effective email communication solutions uh, to, for free to non-business users. So your core service is basically uh, your email platform like having Google account or Yahoo and so on. The enabling service 
is basically the series of Amazon Web Services uh, servers, which are the backbone of your email system architecture. That's the enabling service for you to have that, to be able to provide an, uh, the core service, which is the email, plat the email to the user. And then enhancing service is basically a third party uh, spam checking algorithm. Um, so basically it's using to ensure that a customer's primary inbox is clear of phishing emails and or spam. So that's an enhancing service. Another example of enhancing service, if you provide a service to a client and uh, let's say someone pays for uh, internet, internet service provider, and you ended up uh, giving the, um, the customer is paying for the internet, but you provide them with, let's say, antivirus software, or you give them uh, an email account with the internet that they pay for. That's an enhancing service. Uh, the service strategy has something called the four Ps or the four Ps of service strategy. Uh, and the, the first one is perspective, which is basically the vision and direction of the organization. And number two is the position and the positioning of the service provider in a market space and how this enables them to contend with its competitors. And uh, P, the third P is plans, how the service provider will transition from current state to the desired state. And then the last one is patterns, which basically the ongoing repeatable actions that the service provider will have to perform to continue meeting their, the objectives of the customer. So um, uh, basically meaning that you're gonna come up with the uh, vision for your uh, organization and, uh, and the direction, where do you wanna be? So you have to find out where you are right now and how you're gonna get, uh, and where do you wanna be? And then you're going to do um, a baseline basically uh, to find out your position right now in the market. And uh, this basically is gonna tell you where you are. Let's say your vision is to become the top 10 uh, or number one service provider in the area or customer service then you want to find out where are you right now in this, uh, in this market. And then you have to come up with a plan and how to, be, how to transition from your current state. Uh, let's say you're number 20, you want to be number five. So you have to come up with a plan and then you have to take some actions that will help you uh, meet your objectives for the vision that you have. Uh, so the service strategy has a, a, a series of main processes which will be discussed in greater details. But these processes basically uh, are the strategy management, service portfolio management, financial management, demand management, and business relationship management, or um, BRM. So the first purpose, uh, process of service uh, stra is the strategy management. And the strategy management is basically, um, uh, it focuses on assessing the service provider's uh, offerings and capabilities and available competitors uh, orienting its positions within the market to develop a strategy to serve, to serve the customers. So top level management responsible for this process, which will ensure that the implementation of a design strategy and designates the roles that, uh, who will carry out, uh, carry it out. So the active role in this process is the service strategy manager and the output for that is the strategy and tactical plans strategy review schedules, mission statements, vision statements, and strategy requirements for new services. So that's the uh, main process uh, or one of the processes of strategy of service strategy. A second uh, process, uh, sub process for service strategy, strategy management is strategic service assessment, which orient and, the, and position the service provider with its current market space. And you have another sub process of that is a service strategy definition, which basically de defines the overall goals and outcomes, which the service provider should uh, pursue in its development. You're gonna use the results of the strategic service assessment that will help you identify services, which the projects will use to create value. Another sub process is define strategic initiatives and ensure that they are implemented. So um, the um, uh, next, uh, another sub process is strategic service assessment. Uh, we talked about that and uh, orient and position the service provider with the current market space uh, the definitions and then the service strategy execution, which defines strategic initiatives and ensure that they are implemented. 
Uh, another process of the service strategy is service portfolio management. And the service portfolio management uh, is a complete list of the IT services and IT provider services managed by a service provider. So it has all the list of all the uh, IT services offered um, and that's called the service portfolio management. And managing the service portfolio means organizing uh, the contracts that you have with your uh, customers, service improvement plans, and as well as outlining the third party services your organization will need to utilize in order to deliver value to the customer. So basically meaning that um, any third party service, like a vendor, like you, you have to be able to use, uh, to be able to deliver a value to the customer. And the output of that is to up to date service portfolio change, uh, proposals for change management, reports on the status of the new and changed services, and then also uh, other reports as well. There are active roles that are in, uh, involved with this process, the service portfolio management, and that's the service portfolio manager, um, the financial manager, service owner, technical analyst, and so on. And there are some sub processes for uh, service portfolio management. Uh, one is define and analyze the new and changed services. That sub process will allow you to define the outcomes desired for a new or changed service. So uh, basically knowing what um, the outcome is going to be uh, for if let's say you want to introduce a new service uh, to the customer or you want to change a service, a particular service. So you, with the attention to what will resources and service assets will be needed for them. So you're going to uh, know to, get, to find out uh, what resources that you're going to need and assets that you, uh, you will be able to use to implement the, uh, the new service or a change service. And another sub process for the service portfolio management is the defining the objectives of a proposed a new or change service. So you're going to be able to, how it might interact with the impact of our overall service portfolio. So you're gonna look at the uh, proposed new or change service, and you're gonna see how that interact with the overall service portfolio. And you're going to decide or determine what will be needed to provide the service. Another sub process is approve a new and change service. So introducing a new service or changing a service needs approval. So this is basically meaning that the submissions of the change proposal to a change management. So you're gonna create a change management. And this sub process is basically concerned with the overall service change. So dealing with cha uh, change, uh, change management. And the service portfolio review will allow you to assess the service portfolio at the regular intervals and then keep that uh, perpetually up to date. Uh, next uh, is the uh, financial management for IT services. And the purpose for that process is the uh, responsible for budgeting, accounting, and all fiscal aspects of the uh, ITIL or uh, enterprise. So this basically the process can be considered the most important part of the service strategy uh, phase because you're gonna be anticipating changes and pivoting throughout the service life cycle, uh, which, allow, which is often tied directly to budgetary constraints. So introducing a, a new service or a changing a service uh, sometimes will require some cost and that might be uh, rejected for that reason. So you have to kind of deal with that. Uh, that's a very important uh, process for uh, this financial management for IT service. So, the, uh, the main, the active role involved with this process is the financial manager. Um, so dealing with that, approving projects and so on. A, if there are some uh, sub processes involved with the financial management. Uh, one of them is the financial management support, uh, which basically outlines the architecture that will manage financial uh, planning data and allocate the cost of services. Another thing is financial planning, uh, which pl plans the IT budget and then project how it will be used over the next planning period. So ensuring that they efficiently apply to all services required. And there's another uh, sub process called in financial analyst analysis and reporting, which allow you to create a, a financial analysis, which is basically uh, used to support the service portfolio management process. 
And then you have another subprocess called uh, service invoicing and that creation and distribution of invoices to the customer. Another process for uh, service strategy is called demand management. And demand management uh, is the process of interpreting, anticipating and influencing customer demand for services. So this main process works closely and directly with the capacity management, which ensures that uh, the service provider can deliver the value that is being requested by the customer and or the market at large. So uh, this is basically an example of that demand management is like um, creating demand for a service based on maybe um, supply. And so let's say uh, an example of that is like airline ticket where you want to um, sell a, a ticket three months in advance, but uh, let's say the airliner went to um, have some, um, uh, ha have some uh, three days before the, the flight, maybe they want to increase the price or decrease the, the, the price based on what is, uh, how many seats are available. So that's dealing with demand management. So you can reduce the cost to increase the demand and you can maybe increase the cost because you only have a few seats left. Another process called business relationship management. And uh, the purpose of that process uh, for service strategy is the uh, focuses on customer relations. So this is highly interactive and attuned to customer base. So uh, this is where the maintenance of positive relationship and communication helps to ensure that the developing services are effectively meeting the requested or uh, expected needs of the customer, right? So the Output for that is definitions, uh, uh, stakeholders definitions, defining business outcomes, uh, the customer portfolio itself and the customer satisfaction in any imaginable fashion. So like creating uh, uh, customer satisfaction surveys and reports. Uh, the business relationship uh, has some pro sub processes. One of them is the maintain customer relationships which ensures that the organization maintains uh, an understanding of the customer's needs and then develops relationships with the new customers. And also another sub process is maintaining the customer portfolio to update and maintain the ownership of the customer portfolio. Another sub process is the uh, identity service requirements, uh, which understanding the document and documenting the desired outcomes of the service and determining whether or not the service provider's present service offerings can satisfy the customer's needs. So, uh, so understanding uh, the outcomes of the service, right? What is the service going to provide? What's the outcome of providing this particular service? And you're going to understand that and you're going to document it. And then you're going to decide uh, or determine whether or not this, uh, the, the service that you're offering to the customer is actually, uh, Satisfying the customer's needs is delivering values. And if it's not doing that, you're going to express the need for additional services to be added. So you can add additional services or improve the service that you're offering to the customer. Another sub process is the sign up customer, uh, customers to standard services, which obtain customers based on what the service provider is currently offering. And uh, speaking the focus here is concerned in configuring the current services which allow you to satisfy customer needs without having to provision new services. Another sub process is the customer satisfaction survey, which basically uh, uh, drafting uh, and distributing and evaluating customer satisfaction surveys is of a great value to the service provider. So, and that this will allow you to provide, uh, will give you a great opportunity for customer retention. So allow you to keep the customer. So uh, basically you're going to draft, distribute and evaluate the customer satisfaction survey. So you create a survey, give it to the customer and you're going to evaluate it. And then this will help you retain the customer. So another, another sub process of uh, business relationship management is handling customer complaints. Uh, so basically this will continue, continuously record and respond to customer complaints as well as the customer com compliments as well. And if there are complaints, you're going to escalate the uh, appropriate action as needed. And if there are compliments, you need to record that as well. So uh, basically providing IT service to a customer and maybe the service that you're providing, the application support, whatever service you're providing is not really meeting the, meeting the customer's needs or really making the customer happy. 
So you need to basically uh, make sure that if there are complaints, you need to escalate it. And another uh, sub process is monitoring customer uh, complaints. So handling and monitoring is two different things. Uh, monitoring is continuously monitor and review the processing status of outstanding customer complaints. And uh, customer complaints and inc incident management, these two concepts can get confused. Uh, so basically, the um, uh, we, we will talk about that. Uh, uh, the, what are the difference between customer complaints and incident management? So you know, customer complaints, maybe they're not happy with the service, uh, but incident management is basically managing the incident of the uh, that the that is happening. So an incident basically could be something that uh, in IT, like a server could shut down or uh, fail. That's an incident. It could be a problem as well. Multiple incidents can lead, lead to a problem. So, uh, so, an, so incident management basically is the process of where service disruption incidents are reported to the service provider. So you have an incident like um, maybe emails are down. That's an incident. And that could be also a problem based on how many people are experiencing the, this issue. So when you receive a report for incident, it's up to the service provider to attempt a timely service restoration. So and that also could be based on the service level agreement that you have with the customer. And this, the business relationship management should not be the one in charge of this, right? Um, if this is often ends up being the case, the incident management process is ineffective and should be redesigned. So an incident management is basically dealing with um, how to restore this, the incident. The, um, the customer complaints, uh, some examples of that, uh, customer is dissatisfied with the overall level of service is received. Maybe the customer is dissatisfied with the functionality of the new deployed service. So let's say you provide the customer with a new application and maybe they're not happy with the functionality of that application. Or maybe the customer is dissatisfied with how the specific staff member handled the situation, how they handled a specific incident. And maybe a customer is dissatisfied with the information given to them by the service provider. Or maybe the competitor is offering a service with more value uh, or less cost uh, for this particular service. So how uh, a business relationship uh, management responds to customer complaints. You basically reviews the outstanding complaints regularly, and then you need to escalate them as needed. And you're going to follow the appropriate procedure. For example, who are you going to escalate this uh, complaint to? And then you advise the customers of the status of the complaint, and then the actions, uh, what actions are, go are being taken currently on this particular complaint. And then you're going to analyze the complaints over time to determine any potential uh, trends. So if customers continue complaining about this, then it might be an issue, uh, then you need to look into a deeper issue. And uh, you need to uh, work with the service level management and the customers to develop a plan for improving the service as part of the one of the phases called CSI or continual service improvement. And um, so now let's talk a uh, review of the service strategy, which is the, uh, the first phase of the five uh, phases of ITIL. So the service strategy is basically the objective of service strategy is to decide on a strategy to serve the customers. And you're going to start from an assessment of the customer's needs and uh, marketplace. And then you're going to the service strategy life cycle stage is going to decide or determine which service the IT organization is going to offer and uh, what capabilities need to be developed. So as one might expect, the service strategy is largely about la uh, laying down the blueprint for the business. This is why it's usually at the center of the ITIL uh, wheel diagram. So you're gonna lay down the strategy, understand what your customers want, manage your suite of services, and utilize financial and demand management to forecast matters with supply and demand. So uh, customer service, Topic is largely in the realm of uh, business relationship management of this life cycle. So uh, again, uh, to service strategy uh, phase provides uh, defined solutions to business problem. And 
demand management is basically a service, service portfolio management, financial management and business relationship management are the, are the processes of the, uh, of the service strategy. So, and then the, the services uh, in service strategy are uh, classified into three uh, different cores, uh, three, three different services. One is the core service, another one is enabling service, and then a third one is enhancing service. So again, to finalize or to uh, conclude this about service strategy, the objectives of service strategy is to uh, understand what strategy uh, the strategy is. You're going to define the services of the customers uh, and the customers who use those services. And then you're going to uh, decide on the level of investments required. And then uh, you're going to have a working relationship between the customer and the service provider. So hopefully this uh, helped a little bit with understanding the uh, phase of service strategy, which is one of the phases of the five phases, life cycle phases of ITIL. And in a future video, we're going to be discussing the uh, other phases. Uh, so we, the first phase is service strategy. We're gonna have a separate video to discuss the service design. And we're gonna have another video about service transition, uh, service operation, and, uh, and then a continual service improvement. Thank you so much for uh, watching and uh, visit my website, uh, professorzai.net, and then watch, uh, subscribe to my YouTube uh, channel for more videos in the future. Thank you and take care.